Is 5,214 divisible by 11? If we divide it, will we get a nice whole number? If you know the rule for divisibility by 11, then you've probably already answered the question as to whether or not this is a whole number. The rule for divisibility by 11 is interesting because it's quite a bit different from the other divisibility rules. To know if something's divisible by five, you just need to know if it ends in five or zero. And for divisibility by three, you just add up the digits. Here's the test for 11. What we have to do is calculate the alternating sum of the digits. That means we need to do 5 and then minus 2, I'm color coding here, and then plus 1 and then minus 4. So it's an alternating sum, plus minus plus minus. Doing that calculation gives us 5 minus 2 plus one minus four, and this is equal to zero. So when you do this alternating sum, you just have to check if the result is divisible by 11 or not. In this case, the result is indeed divisible by 11. Zero is the zeroth multiple of 11. So indeed, 5,214 divided by 11 will be a whole number because this number is divisible by 11. It turns out that 5,214 is in fact 474 times 11. Now here's one for you to try, 9,859. Is this divisible by 11 or not? If we divide it by 11, do we get a nice whole number? Use the test and see. With the divisibility test, what we need to do is nine minus eight, plus five minus nine and see if the result is a multiple of 11 or not. In this case, that gives us nine minus eight plus five minus nine. And this is equal to negative three, which is certainly not a multiple of 11. So this division problem is not going to give us a whole number. 9859 is not a multiple of 11. This turns out to be 896.27 repeating. If you're familiar with modular arithmetic, then the reasoning behind this divisibility rule and why it works is pretty easy to understand, but I want to give you a quick argument without using modular arithmetic just because fewer people know that. If we have a three-digit number, you know, like this, A, B, C, what this represents, if we were to write it in expanded form, is C, plus 10b plus 100a, right? We're just understanding the place value system. A is counting the number of 100s, B is counting the tens, and C is counting the ones. Central to the rule is the fact that this number should be divisible by 11 if and only if A minus B plus C is divisible by 11. And if we work with this expression a little bit, we can see that has to be the case. But in order to do that, we need to write some stuff as a multiple of 11 here. Look at 100a. We can knock that down one to 99a, and this is a multiple of 11. Of course, we also need to add the a back in. That way we're not actually changing the expression. And 10b, we can bump that up one to a multiple of 11, 11b, and then of course, we we would have to subtract b so that we again haven't actually changed the value of the expression and then we'll just leave the plus c there at the end now we can take an 11 out of these two terms and see what that's going to look like this is going to be 11 multiplied by 9a plus b so if we distribute the 11 through here we would get those two terms and what's left is the alternating sum of digits a minus b plus C. So then we see that this part clearly is a multiple of 11. So in order for this three digit number to be a multiple of 11, it will be necessary and sufficient that the alternating sum of the digits a minus b plus c is itself a multiple of 11. And a similar argument can be made for numbers with more than three digits. The modular arithmetic argument comes down to the fact that the powers of 10 alternate between 1 and negative 1 mod 11. And that's of course why we can't just add the digits, we need to in fact use the alternating sum. 
Now, if you're early in your mathematical journey, you might not have encountered many alternating sums like we see in the 11 divisibility rule, and you also might not know what the natural log of 2 is. But if you do know what this is, here's one more fun fact for you. One of the things you study in calculus is the behavior of what are called infinite series. These are sums of an infinite number of terms. In some cases, sums like this will approach one particular value, and in in other cases, they will not behave so nicely. Here's an example of a famous series called the harmonic series. It's 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 and so on. And this series grows to infinity. It doesn't approach a single number, it in fact gets arbitrarily large, but it does it super, super slowly. But if we take this harmonic series and turn it into an alternating sum like so, 1 minus minus a half, plus a third, minus a fourth, and so on, this series does converge. It does approach one specific value. In fact, the further you go in the series, the closer the value gets to the natural log of two. So divisibility rules quickly lead into a lot of other interesting mathematics, and I look forward to talking more about this stuff in the future. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. Not infinite if you ain't really in the